Mal, I gotta tell you, you uh, you did a really, really great job with this. Thanks, I'm proud of it. It was a lot of fun to make. I cannot wait for Emil to uh, to see this. Oh my God! John! Oh my God! You're finally here. Uh, you've grown so much. Uh, we're gonna, John. We're gonna raise money for charity. It's gonna be so much fun, and and you're here for all of it. Oh my God! Come here. <laughs> Me and John are going to the beach. See you guys later. Bye. Does Emil not know that John is... Just let him have this. It's been a long two years. Okay.
Hey everybody, how's it going? Time for a bumper. Now, if you remember last year specifically, one of the most popular bumpers was a meal having to bake cookies without knowing a recipe. And I felt kind of bad for him, I guess. So I figured this year I would actually try to show people how to properly bake cookies. As you can see, we've got our setup ready, so let's get to it. Now, I know we don't normally start with this, but since my brand is eggs and all that, I figured we would actually prepare the eggs first. So let's just, we gotta be very careful with this first though, because if we do it wrong, uh, do it wrong, do it wrong. Huh, I figured the egg would've started the fire, not the milk. Oh well, these cookies came out good. Need more egg. Uh oh! Breaking news Proton John and his cat Bagel have swapped places, and no one has noticed yet. This is truly a shocking revelation. Oh shit, no. Oh, I, oh, ow. Ow. Oh. How do they do it? How do the, how do the Pokemon train? Ow. <laughs> Fuck you, my kid. Ow. Breaking news, Josh Jepsen is, actually a banana in disguise? Reports show a 100% increase in Jepsen banana content since 2018. Okay guys, I don't have a lot of time. It's after hours at Player's Choice and we're gonna sneak into the arcade again in order to bring you more information about classic arcade games. So let's go, but do it quietly. Now what we got here is Return of the Jetty. Now, if you've ever been to a beach, you notice there's like long stretches of rocks that are on there. You can't really climb on them because it's really dangerous. Kind of like block the tide coming in. That's what this game is about. This is about the return of jetties. Now this game right here, it's a classic. All the way back from Midway, it's Tapper. This is a precursor to mobile games where you tap the screen to, you tap the, you're supposed to be able to tap the screen to play. It's not, okay, I think I got it. And then it's up. Okay, I think I got it. Tapper, you tap it. All right, I think I'm ready to cover this one. This one right here is, I'm too scared, I can't do it. Oh man, if you've never played this one, pole position, it's a treat. You play as a stripper, driving to work as fast as you can to get your prime position, pole position as it were, on the poles. <sighs> now this one, right here, is T-Rock. A game about everyday life in Toronto. John. Tom, what are you talking about? That's clearly about Terrence Ronald going to work every day. No, John John told me that T-Ron was about Toronto. No, that's the other T-Ron. What? How many are there? Two. Just the, just the two. So wait, they look the same. <laughs> Except that she is a bay, she is a queen. 
every day. Slay ya, spish, slay ya, spish, slay. Twitter famous equestrian, a caked up horse mom lesbian, whose tail whipping pedestrians. Yo, nay horse mom, may horse mom, may. What a shoulda coulda been. Watching Luca Chin, what a shoulda coulda been. Watching Luca Chin, getting me to pop a grin, no matter what mood I'm in. What a shoulda coulda been. Always loving Luca Chin, what a shoulda coulda been. Watching Luca Chin, what a shoulda coulda been. Watching Luca Chin, getting me to pop a grin, no matter what mood I'm in. What a shoulda coulda been. Always loving Luca Chin. Voice so soft like an angel. She perfect from every angle. And she has a cat named Bagel that she sharing with the proton. With the proton, with the with the proton. Says that make Luca Gin a neutron, magnetic like they photons, good deal Taco Bell coupons. Do you wanna go through this tight little hole, get the treasure that's on the other side, take it for a ride, Final Fantasy bonafide, scheming like Jekyll and Hyde, pull up tied, will be so big through the vibe, is like a whole meter wide, swing side to side, jokes kill you like cyanide, and leave your grandparents so horrified. Developed a monument to show her power, it's an iconic swap, no Eiffel Tower. I think about it almost every hour. It's an iconic swap, no Eiffel Tower. It's a world wonder the haters will cower. It's an iconic swap, no Eiffel Tower. Maybe follow up with a golden shower. It's an iconic swap, no Eiffel Tower. What a shoulda coulda been. Watching Luca Chin, what a shoulda coulda been. Watching Luca Chin, getting me to pop a grin. No matter what mood I'm in, what a shoulda coulda been. Always loving Luca Chin, what a shoulda coulda been. Watching Luca Chin, what a shoulda coulda been. Watching Luca Chin, getting me to pop a grin. No matter what mood I'm in, what a shoulda coulda could have been always loving Luca Jin. Slay Yaspish, slay Yaspish, slay. Nay horse mom, nay horse mom, nay. Nay Yaspish, nay Yaspish, nay. Slay horse mom, slay horse mom, slay. Sh unlock your chakras, shake your maracas. Hit you with the shaka laka 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 lakas. Fill you with spirit, cleanse all your ghosts like Pac Man with the waka 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 wakas. Nice to meet you. I'm uh, Jules. I'm going to be conducting your interview for the TRG Coliseum. Um, and you are... Marnie. So, uh, you know, we have to ask some preliminary questions. You know, nothing, it's not going to be too scary, I promise. Just kind of general questions. Um, why were you fired from your last job? Ah, I was trying to trick you. It seems like you have loyalty to your last job. That does paint a great picture for you, uh, and we know that you will be loyal with us too. Uh, let me just write that down. Okay, um... Why did you choose this profession? So many reasons that you're speechless? That's, that's quite, okay, interesting. You're doing great, by the way. Marnie, where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? Open to many outcomes, not holding yourself down to any. How do you handle uh, stress and pressure in the workplace? Has never been stressed. What would you say is your greatest strength? Too many to name just one. What, uh, what attributes uh, do you think that you can provide to TRG Coliseum? Quiet and a good listener. Hmm. Those are very great attributes indeed. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to ask you the hard one. What is your greatest weakness? No weaknesses. All right, uh, and then finally, do you have any questions for me? I think this interview went great, but uh, this is the part of the interview where I'd love to hear if you have any questions for me. No questions. Listened well. Well, we'll definitely be in touch, Marnie. Uh, I think this interview went great. Uh, probably one of the best interviews I, interviewees I've ever had, uh, ever. So uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. All right, have a nice day.
breaking news. Lord Donator and The Lamp are secretly dating. The two were spotted sharing spaghetti at a fine dining establishment. Long day? Yeah. I call Lucario. Well, I'm star rank 9. Yeah, well, I made it to the post game. Yeah, well, I have 440 black tumble stones. Okay, well, I'm going to TRG Coliseum. No, 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 no. I'm going to Coliseum. No, you're not going to TRG Coliseum. We can't both go to TRG Coliseum. We've been over Dude, this. Do you even know who I am? Yeah? No, I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. You're who? I'm here to rescue you. I got your R2 unit. I'm here with Ben Kenobi. Ben Kenobi, where is he? Come on! Wait, 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 wait. What are we doing? We're reenacting Star Wars. What do you think? You know, we're supposed to be making those bumpers. But I was going to the Toshi Station to pick up some power converters! You can waste time with your friends when your chores are done. Now, come on. Get to it. Man, you suck. Yeah, well, my frost lights is level 74. You know, I'm rank 9 going into the Crimson Mirelands. We're not doing this. What? Why? Because one, Tim already did this bit, two, he did it better, and three, you're a figment of my imagination. I what? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yo, Rosa, uh... Do you know what star rank 9 means? I have no idea. Don't know, don't care. Alright. Making the mother of all omelets here, Jack. Can't fret over every egg. Not when you're pretty. Oh my god, yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Dude, what a freaking awesome stream, man. So we're gonna we're gonna check out another uh, another song, man. So this is one I've actually never heard of this one before, which is insane because I usually know like pretty much every video game song ever, you know. But this is actually this might be like a pretty underrated one or something like that. So let's let's see what this one is. This is the Supper a uh, Super M Mar Mario Brothers one music. Dude. Dude. Oh my god, this is what? Oh my god, that's so sick, dude. Damn, dude. This goes hard, man. I mean, I feel like this theme definitely is ripping off uh, the Xenoblade theme. Like, I mean, we can all, we all can hear that, right? Like the way that the, the minor second interjects with the parallel third of the second harmony of the third eighth note. You guys hear that? Right there, dude. That's totally freaking counterattack from Xenoblade, dude, right there. But you know, it's like what I, at a certain point, like sometimes you just rip off people. You know what I mean? Like I mean, this is probably like a newer game, right? Super Mario Brothers One. When did that come out? Wait, are you what? There's no way this game came out in 1932. Are you? It did, dude. No way, bro. Who? Hold on. Wait, this is Mario, dude. Tell me this is not just pretty much literally Master Chief. That's literally like that is just a shameless ripoff of Master Chief, dude. Are you serious? He's got the gloves. Master Chief has gloves like the overalls like Master Chief is wearing overalls under the suit. Remember that for being like literally like the most uninspiring, uninnovative video game series of all time. This is actually a pretty badass theme. Hold on. Currently present at the section of a house containing a bathtub and a sink and a toilet. Purchase an additional quantity of tissue designed to remove excrement from the butt.
My olfactory senses are telling me that nearby there must be a stick of antiperspirant that is on fire. Relating to or denoting a sprawling citywide building to which objects of historical, scientific, artistic, or cultural interest are stored and exhibited, an organism or a new genetic character arising or resulting from an instance of mutation having to do with the type of ship that Noah built to save himself and two of every animal from the flood. Go in a specified direction or manner with additional haste, you stupid yellow cactus designed to be an adversary to an Italian plumber. An event marked by festivities or celebration. Small pieces of of shaped metal with incisions cut to fit the wards of a particular lock, but in this case are used to obtain access to a detached building used for storing a motor vehicle or vehicles. Could I request further clarification as to how exactly my performance in that last battle was lacking the expeditiousness that the game apparently expects? making fine adjustments or dividing into marked intervals for optimal measuring the end part of a sleeve where the material is rolled back, an American chef, cookbook author, and TV personality residing in Savannah, Georgia, where she owns and operates the Lady and Sons restaurant. Yours truly is currently taking residence within a six-sided container with a flat base and sides, typically also having a lid, which also happens to be shaped like a hollow muscular organ that pumps the blood through the circulatory system by rhythmic contraction and dilation and belongs to the princess of Super Mario Land. This is Universal Tech Support, your support for everything. How may I help you? Yeah, hey, I've been having some problems with my fridge. I was really hoping you could help. Oh no, not you again. I know, I know, but I really need help with this one. Everything I put into the fridge for some reason turns into something else. I put a slice of pizza in there earlier and it turned into this damn onion. I'm gonna try putting the onion now and see what it turns into. And it turned into a copy of Paper Mario Sticker Star. Ugh, I don't even like onions. Sir, you can't keep calling in these fake reports. Last week, it was about your car keys starting your car. No, no, I said it started a car down the street, not my car. That could just be a coincidence. What about the fact that this light switch turns on my fireplace? Sir, that's how most fireplaces start. But on the TV, too? <sighs> well, these could possibly be glitches in the space-time continuum. Have you noticed anything else glitching out around you? Well, the house caught on fire yesterday while baking cookies, and it's fine now. Other than that, though, I'm not really sure I'd even notice anymore. Have you foolishly considered the possibility that you were foolishly cursed in a foolish past life? Yeah, probably, but you guys have a five-star rating on Google, so I figured you'd actually be able to help me. <sighs> okay. Have you tried turning reality off and back on again? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Hang on, give me a second. Let me do something here. I cannot live another day without air conditioning. It says tomorrow's gonna be hotter. Hotter? Like yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday you said you'd call Sears. I'll call today. You'll call now. I'll call now. Now's the time to save on Sears installed central air conditioning. Get 0% finance charge, no billing, and no payments until August with the Sears Charge Home Improvement Plan. Call now for a free in-home estimate on a Kenmore air conditioning system. State-of-the-art engineering means greater energy efficiency. A new Kenmore could save 10 to 44% on your annual cooling costs. In time, even pay for itself. Sears also offers fast emergency installation, a five-year warranty on parts and labor, plus our satisfaction guarantee. And you know Sears will be there to back it up. Get 0% finance charge, no billing, no payments until August. Offer ends May 31st, so call now and save with Sears. So what's the paper say about tomorrow? Another scorcher. Cool. Yahoo! Spray it, scrub.
scrub it, shine it, clean it, wash it, rinse it, gloss it, sheen it. Yo, we're with some Mario sunshine, so I'ma keep on flooding till I hit the finish line. Check it, spray it, scrub it, shine it, clean it, wash it, rinse it, gloss it, sheen it. Yo, we're with some Mario sunshine, I'ma keep on flooding on till I hit the finish line. Alright, so we did Mario Sunshine versus me versus Chugga versus Josh. Loser had to dump a bunch of goop in their head. Right here, I have a mixture of sour cream and barbecue sauce that I have to goop myself with. My loss was kind of a fluke, but it was because of my own stupid mistake, so I'm here to pay the consequences. This is for direct relief and all the money we present for charity. Let's go! <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, I hate sour cream so much. Oh. All right. Ew, it tastes so bad. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Support Direct Relief. Let's reach half a mil this year. Let's go. Breaking news. Steven George's middle name is Waluigi. I read about it in the YouTube comments section, so it must be true. Oh no. Are you kidding me? <sighs> okay. Call Tom. Hey. Hey Tom. Uh I need a favor. I, I thought I recorded enough Morning Mario for the whole week, but I'm short one. Do you think that there's any way that you could maybe take care of that? I know that you had mentioned about wanting to do one. Yeah, no, I can take care of it. Are you sure? I mean, I don't want to put you out or anything. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. I'll have it to you later today. It's night, but I'll have it to you later today. Thanks, man. I, I, I really appreciate it. Um, well, you, uh, you have a good one, and, uh, I can't wait to see it. Okay. Bye. Love you. Oh. He'll do great. He'll do great. Tom was... Tom was the right person to ask. Okay. Let's see what Tom ended up doing. Good morning, and welcome to Morning Mario here on Steven Plays. Today we have a Super Mario 3D World themed level called Powder Ridge, as you can see it there behind me. But before we get into the mountain, we gotta go over a little bit of safety tips first. First off, always remember your helmet. The cabeza is, is your most important organ, maybe like, maybe second to the heart tight, I don't know. So keep your, keep your helmet on at all times, that way you don't get some sort of concussion. Second, your boots. See them here. Gotta keep them secure and fastened so that way they don't come off in the middle of, of boarding and you just go flying down the hill grinding down. And third, you got you of course got your board here. You gotta keep uh, keep your feet secure on that at all times. Make sure you tighten up on the straps here. And uh, you know, yeah, everything will be everything will be fine and smooth for the entire trip down. So what'd you think? Uh Tom, yeah it. It was, it was good, it's just, you know, um, I, I did ask you to do Morning Mario, and I, I couldn't help but notice that you did a, a snowboarding video. I, I took a few liberties. I, I took a few liberties! I, well, it, it, you did great, it's just... I took a few liberties! I took a few liberties! I took a few liberties! 
You know what, we'll post it, it's fine. I was, I was looking for... <laughs> dude. What? Dude, are you seriously playing guitar right now? I, I think so. This is guitar. <laughs> you're, you're still playing guitar. I'm still playing guitar, yeah. Dude, oh my god. I'm, I'm sorry, I just... I. Okay, <sighs> dude. Bro... <laughs> dude, it's over, man. You didn't know? Dude, I didn't know guitar is over. It's all about the automaton. This thing. It's all about this now. What was that? What was that called? It's the automaton. Okay. Dude, you're still playing guitar, dude. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh my of, god, dude. Kind of feeling Bro. A bullied right now, but No, no, I'm helping you. This is I'm I'm giving you this is the automaton. Like, bro. Like, seriously just all of these guitars, it's done. These are like, this is like a, it's like a fossil, dude. Dude, this cost and, me a lot of money. I, bro. This is my, this is like my profession. You know what else costs a lot of money? Uh, trucks. And you know what? People still drive those. But this is the automaton, and this is the best new instrument of all time. It's Completely, not that new. It's going to revolutionize. It's been out for like ever. Dude, well, it, it took a little bit for long for people to start realizing it. Guitar is so people, done. People dude. realized it, then they realized it wasn't a thing, and then, <laughs> like, now babies use that. Dude. Yeah? So listen, how many strings does that guitar have? Just tell me. Like, I'm just... Um, six. <laughs> exactly. Seven. How many strings does this thing have? Well, I mean, it's kind of like, it's electronic. It says zero strings on it. I know. It doesn't even need strings, man. I it, wouldn't... I wouldn't use that for a stringed song. You don't even need songs anymore with this thing. You just you just play it. It's great. Dude, I mean, okay. You know what? It's, it's all good. I got you. I'll help you out. So Jack has lived with us for two years now. Um, it hasn't gotten much better. I, I always thought that I was the one with, like, the chaotic energy and always, like, What's he gonna do next, but Jack's on a whole other level, man. Over the past few years, it's been, it's gotten even worse. I, I can't even begin to describe, like, but it's gotten to this point where uh, we can't ask him to leave because he, where else is he gonna go, you know? We're the only ones here who can even remotely, I mean, who's gonna be his energy? Who's gonna be able to like, withstand this, you know? Like, did I tell you about the time that uh, he, th he thought he invented playing two guitars at once? So he would do this thing where like he was flipping multiple guitars around him and he looked like some like orbital thing and he just, you know, Delkate got like a, you know, a brain hemorrhage and uh, like, you know, we didn't think he was gonna make it but he got hit in the head with a guitar and then he got hit again in the head with another guitar because that's, that's how it, Goes. I mean, I worry that this condition that Jack has, I'm not really sure what it is, um, open pititis, it might not be something that we can treat within this lifetime. I think if it ever does get, you know, better, you know, we don't know if it could get worse or, you know, maybe, you know, good for like a few days and then bad for another few days and... We just want the best for Jack. Man, I love automaton, man. No? Okay, hold on.
Is that the Atomic One? What? Yeah, this is the coolest. <laughs> what do you mean? This is the coolest instrument ever. Yes, but it's not the Atama Two. <laughs> Hello everyone, and it has been quite a while. As much as I would love to impart more Japanese wisdom onto all of you, I kind of wanted to do something different this year. Some of you may remember that my dear friend Chugga Conroy attempted to make cookies with no recipe and from memory. And, um... It was a little hard to watch. So I thought I'd help out and show him how it's done and show all of you how it's done. I bake quite a lot and make all sorts of things and I have had the Nestle Toll House chocolate chip cookie recipe memorized for years. So I'm gonna show you how to do it today. Let's go. So there's a lot of different things that we need, but the first thing you should always do is preheat your oven, which we are gonna preheat the oven to 325 degrees. The next thing you wanna do is prep any tins that you need. I'm just gonna use oil and get my, my trays ready for the cookies. You really wanna make sure that the cookies are not gonna stick because that'll create a lot of issues because how are you supposed to eat these cookies? So now we gotta do dry ingredients and wet ingredients. We're gonna need two cups of flour. We're all done with flour. We are going to do one cup of granulated sugar. All right, so we have one cup of granulated sugar. We can just go ahead and add that right in here. We're already done with two ingredients, wow. All right, so we are gonna do two teaspoons of baking powder. This is gonna make our um, cookies rise because you don't want flat disc of cookies. It's gonna give the, get them to be a little puffy. We're gonna move on to our cinnamon. Nothing makes our cookies pop more than cinnamon. One teaspoon, cinnamon's very strong, but it's a very nice flavor. So let's get that in there, bam. All right, so the last dry ingredient we need to add is some salt. Now let me tell you something, people don't add enough salt to baked goods. If a recipe says a quarter of a teaspoon, that's too little. I normally do a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon. It kind of depends on the ratio to everything else. So let this be a lesson. Put more salt in your baked goods. I'm gonna start with half a teaspoon and then see if I need to add a little bit more. Alrighty, so now we're just gonna mix them all together, all of our dry ingredients, the flour, the sugar, the baking powder, the cinnamon, the salt. Next, we're gonna move on to our wet ingredients, i.e. our butter, our milk. So let me grab those things very quickly. All we need is just two tablespoons of butter because we're gonna have a lot of other wet ingredients that are gonna help get our cookies to be very rich. And you actually want the two tablespoons of butter to be melted because it's just gonna help open up that flavor a little bit more. So I'm gonna do that real fast. Let's do our milk. So we're gonna need one and a quarter cup of milk. Whole milk is great, but also any kind of like oat milk, almond milk. So I'm just gonna pour that into our smaller bowl, which I'm realizing I should have done the opposite, but you know, we're here now. And I'm gonna put our butter in there and I'm gonna give it a whisk. We're working with our nice milk and butter. And then normally we would add an egg here, but I don't have any eggs, so, you can actually use a quarter cup of vegetable oil to yield the same kind of result. There we go. All right, quarter cup of vegetable oil, or I think this is corn oil. It's all good, don't worry. I'm a professional, it's all good. So the last thing that we need to add to our cookies is our beautiful extract. We have some ube extract. So I am just gonna add two teaspoons of that. All right, so I'm gonna give that a stir. Oh my gosh. I wish you guys could smell this. The ube is such a nice smell. 
and it is really the secret ingredient to chocolate chip cookies. It really makes or breaks it. And that's something that you see a lot of people lacking, is they really forget to put that ube extract in their cookies, which who does that? We are ready to combine our dry ingredients and our wet ingredients, so I'm just gonna let it rip. All right, so now we want to whisk our dry ingredients and wet ingredients together very carefully. It doesn't need a million stirs. Just kind of make sure it's well incorporated. You don't see any dry lumps or anything. You just want it to be nice and smooth. The next thing we need to do is we need to distribute this mix into our trays. So I'm gonna do that real quick right now and then we're gonna pop them in the oven. We're gonna start with 10 minutes, because cookies don't take that long, but we're gonna check, because we're not just gonna pull out. We're gonna double check. So, we're gonna prep these, and make sure that you're happy with the size of the cookies that you're making. Some people like to have smaller cookies, so there's more, some people like really big cookies. It's really entirely up to you. All right, so we are going to pop these trays in our oven and start at 10 minutes but we'll check on it in a bit. For now, go, go relax, go, go hang out, all right? So the cookies needed a little bit more than 10 minutes, so I just let them chill a little bit more in the oven. I'll put the time somewhere here, I don't know, annotations and all that. And um, I'm just gonna let it cool for a little bit before I take them off the tray and put them on our serving dish. So, um, we're almost done. And just like that, we're done. Here are some chocolate chip cookies made from memory. So I hope you guys learned something very valuable from this. I am excited to eat this. Bye-bye, everyone. That one flew away, that's okay. Hey, Tim. Oh, hi. Hi. What's going on? Guess what we're doing. I could not even imagine. I got it right here. Cockney rhyming slang! I just got hit because of you. Okay, what? Uh, <laughs> no. Cockney uh, rhyming No, slang. um. Mad Libs! That's what we're doing! Oh, okay. For those that don't know, these are short stories where you fill in the blank with random words there. You don't know what the context is going to be, and it it's, it's very funny. You probably did it in school a long time ago. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do two rounds. Uh, seeing who is overall the funniest, and the winner gets a fabulous prize. Ooh. Do you know what that is? Um, a second copy of Pokemon Legends? It's pretty good, actually, but no. Yeah, this is the best prize I could muster, and oh boy, it was hard to give up. Okay. The white mystery for my bag of <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Let's get to it. Oh, it's real. It's on. Uh, select a page. I'll tear it out for you. 13. 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. So you got a charming story with a happy ending as your first story. Perfect. Here so. I go. Okay, what is your second story <laughs> going to be? What page? Uh, two. Two. Okay. <laughs> I was worried you were going to say, like, 80, and I'm like, there's no 80. <laughs> page two. You got... Bullfighting. Bullfighting. Wow. Here you go. Okay, I'm done. You're done! You're done. Okay, I'll take number three, so right after you. I got bowling! Bowling? Ah, all the, all, all the sports <laughs> of kings. Bullfighting, bowling, okay. All the bull sports. All the bullshit. I didn't get that. Shut up, Siri! <laughs> Five, six. I got the concert program. Boy. All right, you're All up right. first, bud. Well, here goes nothing. Once upon a ball, there were three little pigs. The first little pig was very stupid, and he built a house 
for himself out of shiny Pokemon. The second little pig was Smelly, and he built a house out of baseball bats. <laughs> uh, but the third little pig was very burnt, and <laughs> he built his house out of genuine roosters. That's morbid <laughs> on multiple levels. Indeed. Well, one day, a mean old wolf came along and saw the houses. Banzai, he said. I'll take in and I'll blow. I swear to God I didn't do that on purpose. And I'll blow your... Okay, I'll take in and I'll blow, and I'll blow your house down. And he blew down the first little pig's curtains, and the second little pig's blood vessels. The two little pigs ran to the third pig's house. Thereupon, the wolf ran blowing, but he couldn't blow down the third little pig's hot dog house. So he uh, confessed off to the forest, and the three little powerless pigs resolved <laughs> or moved to Chicago and uh, went into the sausage business. Oh. <laughs> I like how the, the burnt pig's house is made of hot dogs and then they went into the sausage business. <laughs> That's a little too long to know. Uh, Alright. The name of my story was Bowling. <laughs> Almost every community in America now has a bowling red light district because bowling <laughs> has become very fancy with young moms. <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> most, of them have be most of them become very crusty at the game. <laughs> the main objective is to roll the heavy bowling drip down the alley <laughs> and knock down 47 bins which are at the other end. If you knock them all down on one roll, it's called a squeak. If it takes Ooh. two rolls, it's called a yeet. <laughs> Many alleys have automatic cupcake setters. Others hire coasters who set pins by bicycle. <laughs> the most important thing to remember when bowling is to make sure you have a good grip on the America or you're likely to drop your ankle. <laughs> I don't want to go to this bowling alley, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's not as bad as I was expecting it to be when um, when I wrote America in there. I was just like, that's a huge mistake, but I'm going with it. It wasn't so bad. All right, now on to your second story. Woo! All right, then. This is the bullfighting story. So, <laughs> bullfighting is a silly sport, which is very popular in Somalia. A bullfighter is called a matador and his equipment consists of a long, sharp candy bar called a dinero and a bright red skirt. He waves his skirt at the bull, which makes the bull butt hurt and causes him to charge. The matador then goes through a series of fiery maneuvers to, uh, to avoid getting caught in the bull's left nut. If the matador kills the bull, the spectators yell, Encanta and throw their fudgesicles into the ring. If the bull wins, they <laughs> yell Flipperty Gibbet and call for another matador. Bullfighting is a very sun drenched sport, but it will never be popular in America because Americans don't believe in cruelty to Yoshis. <laughs> At least another happy ending. Right on. The concert program is our finale. Here goes nothing. This evening, the famous orchestra conductor, Tim, will present a program of classical wives at the Remote Music Center. That's perfect. He will conduct the Cat Symphony Orchestra, which is noted for its excellent string and stinky wind sections. <laughs> Stinky that's wind. very that's very you and very cat. How does that even happen? Considered by many wolves to be the world's most playful ensemble. The program will begin with Debussy's Claire de Candy, followed by Mendelssohn's Adorable Song, and Strauss's Tales of the Vienna Litter Box. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Vienna Litter Box. Then we will hear Rachmaninoff's Horn Concerto Number 69, but only the wiggling movements. <laughs> oh, of course. After intermission, the second half of the program will be devoted to playing, in its entirety, Beethoven's Fifth Nipple. <laughs> 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 Tickets are on sale now at the bed office. Beethoven's Fifth Nipple. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. Oh my gosh. Tell you what. 
The Three Little Pigs was the better of the your two. I think the second... Yeah. Was the second one the better of mine, or was the bowling? Oh, man. Uh, I, uh, I think the second one was better. Second one was... Yeah, I think the Beethoven's Fifth yeah. Nipple was my funniest moment. That was the line mm. that won the rat battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the funniest overall moment, though, but I think your... I think your... Um, your, house made of hot dogs. Yeah, your house made of hot dogs and they all oh, going into geez. the sausage business and the third pig was really burnt. I mm. think that was probably the... That was really <laughs> morbid on so many levels, though, but I loved it. So did I. Well, we did say it was funny story and not funny moment, though, so I think this is yours. I say we split it. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. So what do we think the flavor is going to be? Like, I guess we can guess what the flavor is. We're going to eat this on camera? Okay. Here I go. <laughs> I win. You're all just like, oh, well, thank you, Tim. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is? I think I'm. I'm thinking maybe cherry. Oh wow! Oh, that brings back memories of something. Mm -hmm. What was that? Oh yeah, I'm putting this whole thing in. This is like when you uncover a memory in Breath of the Wild. Hmm. It's 2004, that's all I can... Hmm. What is the flavor record date of 2004? Mm. Thank you for sharing your prize. Thank and thank you for, you for joining us for the Runaway Guys Coliseum 2022. Yes, donate to Direct Relief. And let's get off this pandemic over with. Right. Please. Ah. Oh. Also, I'm gonna have to burp. Oops, I already burped. What's up, every every guy, everybody? Uh, this is your favorite podcast for gear, metal gear, gear. R r r br guitar, no, what metal, it? Gear, metal gear, solid, solid, sons of liberty, sons of liberty. We are the sons of liberty, and we're here to give you the best reviews, the most solid reviews of gear for your metal music. That's right. Jack, what do we have today for oh. new gear? Well, we uh, we just have an awesome new box of gear. Uh, it's got so much gear in it. We're going to check it out. I've never seen any of this gear. Our uh, our, our gear expert, uh, mm -hmm. Adriana Figueroa, uh, yeah. brought in some new gear oh, for us to okay. check out. So Good. we've never seen this gear before, so it's going to be the greatest. Like, I'm very excited, so let's see what kind of gear we have. Let. The. Gear. Rip. All right. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, dude. All right. The first product. So the first product we have is obviously the snail odd batar. Uh, this, oh, dude. I love the snail odd batar. Sometimes you just feel like you're going too fast on the guitar and you got to slow it down. Us metal guys, sometimes, you know. Where's the feel? Where is the feel? Where's the Marshall stack? Where's the, where's the Les Paul Strat? You know what I'm saying? So I think... What this is supposed to do is you have to, yeah, see, even just by, like, being in the presence of the Snellar guitar, it, like... Oh, dude, I can feel the feels happening in my hand. Like, I just want to go... And then if I w touch his little ears or eyes, whatever these things are, oh, dude, it's insane. It's working! It's working! I'm speechless. I'm, I'm bewildered. I'm snail-bound. Even snail bound. Yes. How, how much are these? This is one hundred and fifty-eight thousand four hundred eighty-two dollars uh, USD. Uh, SRP MLP. Um, MLG. MLG. So if you, if you got to slow down, uh, low low price. I'm sure there's some payment plans if uh, you're a pussy. So next. Uh, Amazing. All right. I'll I'll handle the next one. All right. What do we got? A, that was a great product. Oh, dude. Oh, what's this? Oh, my God. I've never seen it's, that in my life. It's it's finally the uh, the the fret button. It hits 17 frets 17 at once. 17 frets at once. You, you, get, you glaze it upon your guitar. Glaze it, it also cleans it. It cleans your guitar okay. while you're pushing it, and then it goes... Okay. You yeah. hear that? Yeah, I heard that it stayed the same pitch for all of these, but then you decided to go up in pitch when you were here. So that's pretty cool. I think. Yeah. Uh, well, I turned it on. Oh, okay. In the middle, right, of, right, in the middle right. of it. How is it? How is it powered? 
Uh, by Satan. Oh, oh. Yeah. I mean, everyone's kind of moving up to Satan yeah. for uh, charging. I mean, wireless charging, is just, it's just not getting this stuff done. I mean, we're playing metal here. We might as well go to the source. All yeah. right, Jack, what else do we have? Yeah, so this... this. Uh, oh, yeah, how much is this? Um, I don't know. Okay, Amazing, on. so what's the next... Uh, yeah, what um, is the next gear here? Oh, dude, I've always wanted one of these. Oh, oh of course. Oh, dude. yes! Dude. Oh... Yo, what is that? An air fryer. Uh, oh, so dude. when uh, you oh get hungry, uh, you kind of you just put the food in here, I guess, and then oh, <laughs> whoa, that's insane! Pop out the food, and then you eat it. You're fueled up for your next metal show. You know, you can put anything you want in here. You can put um, only legal things in here. Yeah, kids. Um, but, you know, you put in a taquito, you can put in a taco, Whoa. you can put in a burrito. Insane. So, toes. And, it, yeah, it's, it's yeah. going to fry it up. And it's, it's very relevant to a uh, guitar that we're talking about. Yeah, why did, we, why did about. we get this? I mean, this is... This is yeah. um, Maybe we should just fire yeah, it. Yeah, all right. Uh, well, that's all the time we have for today. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. And don't forget, don't re remember... Gear. Metal. Solid. Catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>
breaking news. Super MC Gamer put socks on over issues? Swears it's not a fad, and it is better for walking, comfort, and fashion. What's the matter, MC? Oh, Emil, um, yeah, uh, I've been opening up Pokemon packs for days uh, of open, or probably box at this point. I have not had a good rare in days. Oh. I think I'm done with Pokemon. I'm done. Uh, I mean, if you're done, are you gonna do anything with the rest of your packs? I only have one left, and you know what? You can even keep what you get. Okay. Okay, let's see. Umbreon EX, Pidgeot EX, Kingdra EX, this is a, this is Sharon's a, Care Secret Rare, this, this is Kindler wrong. Secret Rare, Dragonite EX, Komoo GX, Tapu Fini GX, Pheromosa GX, Incineroar GX. Um, Emil, no, this, is, this has to be a misprint. Yeah, I know, no Charizards. What? It's all Secret Rares and Ultra Rares. MC. MC, MC, MC! Uh, yeah, yeah, what's up? We're ready for the next segment, come on, get upstairs. I'll, I'll be up in a second, I swear, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. What's up, TRG Coliseum? It's uh, Jared, and I thought this year we would do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm gonna allow my cat to be the star of this bumper, so enjoy about two minutes or so of Blue being the most adorable kitty you've ever seen. Mission. 
It is a running tradition for members of TRG crew to make cookies for bumpers. So I thought I would take a swing at it, but with a little bit of a spin. So I am known for playing randomizers on YouTube, and we're about to play a Zelda randomizer. So I thought today we would randomize a chocolate chip cookie recipe. So I have a recipe here on my phone, and I'm going to be randomizing each ingredient and randomizing the amount of each ingredient. Starting off with one cup of butter. It is going to be one fourth cup of cheese. All right, one good heaping of cheese. It's gonna make a great base for the cookies. Next, we have to replace one cup of sugar with two tablespoons of baking soda. So, two tablespoons is gonna make this rise very, very high. Next ingredient is a cup of brown sugar. A cup of lemonade. <laughs> Just as a forewarning, I do have to eat one of these cookies. Whoa, the baking soda made it all bubbly. <laughs> Now it's just some cheese, bubbly cheese. <laughs> it's cheese soda. Okay, I have to replace two tablespoons of vanilla extract. One half cup of oats. Got some nice organic oats. You know our cookies are gonna be healthy. This will probably give us some good substance. Uh, half a cup. Beautiful. Gordon Ramsay would be proud. Okay, next is three cups of all-purpose baking flour. Okay, we have one tablespoon of chocolate syrup. Ooh, delicious, delicioso. Do you think one tablespoon of chocolate syrup is gonna offset the cheese soda? This is one teaspoon of baking soda. <laughs> we use two tablespoons of baking soda. It's so funny. Two cups, uh-oh. Two cups of tortilla chips. Ooh. <laughs> All right, there's one cup of potato chips. And of course, for good measure, a second heaping. Have you ever seen potato chips come out of a measuring cup before? Probably not, there's a first time for everything. We have one half teaspoon of baking powder replaced with two tablespoons of Whipped cream, mmm. <laughs> My dad taught me that one. We have one teaspoon of sea salt, one fourth cup, taco sauce, thick and smooth. I don't like it being described like that. Here we go. Oh, that's gonna ruin it for sure, for sure. Ooh. We have one last ingredient, which is two cups of chocolate chips. We're gonna go with one teaspoon, tiny little finale, of protein powder. <laughs> I love the little teaspoon. No, this is just to make sure that we get some gains because you gotta get your protein in every single day, bro! Every day! <laughs> then we mix it. Get a look at this. It's amazing. Contraption. Yeah. No, it's it's really liquidy. I don't know if that's gonna work. I'm gonna add a little bit of flour. Oh. Whipping it up. Whipping it up. Let's see how these bad boys turned out. Come on, get close, get close. Go ahead and look into the ovens. Come on, get, get closer, get closer. Closer. I didn't put him in that oven. <laughs> I put him in this oven. <laughs> oh, it's funny. oh my gosh, there they are. Oh, Ew. Ow, <laughs> I'm too tall. They don't smell bad, honestly. All right, get close, get close. Tell me which one of these cookies looks the best. Get real close. This one, which one should I eat? Oh, they're like, 
they're mushy. <laughs> Ew. I'll eat, I'll, I'll try this one. It looks like bread. All right, here I go. I'm so scared. Not too bad. It's great. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to donate. Donate directly to you. Do it now. <laughs> I mean, realistically, they're not that bad. They kind of remind me of like banana bread almost. But not good. <laughs> Maybe a whole cookie. She tried it. She tried it. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> Did you spit it out? <laughs> Did you spit it out? Okay. Did you swallow it? She swallowed it! Let's go! <laughs> At least we have one supporter in the house. Is <laughs> there a supporter? There's no chocolate? I said chocolate cookie. Yeah. Do it for the hundreds of thousands of people watching. <laughs> Thoughts? Uh, no, like, it's not that bad. It's not awful. It's like not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Surprisingly. So my stepmom ate one. My sister ate one. Come on, the dad has to eat one too. You can't flake out. What do you think? That's yeah, not good. <laughs> okay, that's the consensus. Thank you for watching. <laughs>everyone, this is Insane in the Harvey, your favorite host of the Runaway Guys Play, Family Feud. Last Just Call Saint, we had a wonderful event fueled by responses that you guys sent in to our survey questions. Now, the survey questions for this year's event have already been completed, we're tabulating the results, and we'll be able to show them to you very soon in TRG Play's Family Feud 2022 edition. Now, on last year's show, we had a lot of, you know, answers that you might expect, typical answers to the kinds of questions, but this time, I wanted to dig into the data. I wanted to get into the nitty gritty and see some of the more... Um, how should I say it? Colorful answers that didn't quite make the cut in the real show. To start off, one of the questions that we had on last year's show was, name something Mario would hate to have happen to him. And as you might expect, you know, people thought that Mario would hate getting stabbed by Sephiroth again, or being denied by Peach after going through all that effort to rescue her from Bowser countless times. But one of the ones that I didn't expect, and it seems that most people in chat didn't expect was, um, Yoshi role reversal. So in this scenario, you know, Mario's riding Yoshi and they're trying to jump to this next platform and Yoshi's like, screw you, Mario. I want to be the one that survives this time. And so Mario plummets to his death while Yoshi, you know, advances. I'm all for supporting rights for Yoshis in this world, but I think if Yoshi was the one that made it to Peach, um, Peach would have a lot of questions and maybe not be so supportive. One that I'm kind of surprised didn't make the cut was, um, somebody touching Mario's spaghetti. Somebody touched my spaghetti. Something like that. And the last rather unexpected answer was Mario actually having to be a plumber. Let's say your toilet is clogged. You know, you use your plunger, try and do it yourself. You call your local plumber. They can't really figure it out. All you're left with is Mario. And what's he been doing? He's been in the Mushroom Kingdom this whole time, jumping around, stomping Goombas, collecting Koopa shells, you know? He hasn't been a plumber in like, how many years? Like 25 at least? He's not fit for this job anymore. He doesn't even deserve to be called the plumber. Do plumbers have licenses? I don't know, they probably do. If, if they do, Mario probably doesn't have his, or it expired a long time ago when he started making way more money from trying to rescue Peach rather than fixing people's toilets. Another question from the show was, name a Mario sports game that does not already exist. And we got some pretty cool answers that I would actually love to see, like Mario football, Mario curling, which kind of exists in Olympic games, but not as its standalone thing, Mario cricket, bowling, lacrosse. But there were some that were just so interesting and unexpected that I thought, they needed their own little spotlight here. One of which was Waluigi sumo wrestling. Now, you know what Waluigi looks like, and you know what a sumo wrestler looks like. I have no idea what Waluigi sumo wrestling would look like. Another one is Super Mario Superstar Speedwalker. I can kind of see this one. Mario 64 is, you know, wa just walking around as Mario is so much fun in that game. And maybe we just need a Mario walking simulator, you know? Walk through the Mushroom Kingdom, see the sights, not worry about stomping enemies and just Go on a nice walk. He could use some relaxation for once in a while. And perhaps the one that's the most interesting is Super Mario Esports Champion League of Legends. 
Can you imagine a Mario MOBA? I mean, okay, in a Mario MOBA, who's doing what? You've probably got Mario as your ADC down bot, Yoshi as your support, you know, pulling in enemies with the tongue. Let's say, uh, let's say Peach is in mid, you know, she's probably some sort of spellcaster with her using her umbrella as a wand or something, or I don't know. Um, Luigi's up top because, you know, Luigi's just a loader like that. Obviously, you know, we gotta have DK in the jungle. DK in the jungle coming to gank your lands and going, you know. Oh man, I would I would love to see that. I think that's a great spin-off. Mario Esports Champion League of Legends. Okay, looking at my notes over there. Next question. Name something Kirby would hate to swallow. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm just gonna skip that one. You guys don't wanna know what people said for that. Here's one that I collected data for, but that wasn't actually in the show. Name something that Waluigi dreams about. Now, there are some pretty obvious answers here, like getting into Smash, John, money, John, his own game, Rosa John, Wah, Tacos, More John, things like that. But one that really surprised me was um, a healthy body mass index. I know that I drew some attention to Luigi's limbs earlier when talking about Waluigi sumo wrestling, but I'm afraid that a little gust of wind might snap his toothpick arms, you know? He could definitely use a little bit of, a uh, little bit of bulking up. Maybe he needs to take a few tips from Mario and hit the gym or eat some garlic. That's because that's what you eat to gain muscle. And the last strange answer for this one, name something that Waluigi dreams about. I didn't understand this at first. His bridal boutique. I didn't understand this at all, so I gave it a search and then I understood. <laughs> this is so stupid! I, I don't even remember what that property is actually supposed to be. Like, I need to go look that up after. You know, I'll look, I'll look it up. Okay, what, what is that property actually supposed to be? <laughs> Let's see. A bridal oh, boutique. Oh, there you go. That price makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> okay, one of the other questions was name a KK Slider song. And some of the more popular ones were ones like, you know, Bubblegum KK, Go KK Rider, um, KK Cruise, and some of my personal favorites. But there was one in particular that I would really love to see made. Um, KK Bohemian Rhapsody. Mami no que no. Mami no que mommy. Mami no ge no baba ni mo ni a boogie. I tried. I really tried. And the last question for this behind the scenes segment name a psychic type Pokemon. Now, it's understandable. We're not all Pokemon buffs. We're not all experts in this. It's totally natural to think that Gengar is a psychic type Pokemon. After all, it does use psychic type moves, you know? On the trading card games, it uses a little eye symbol, and that's kind of both for Ghost and Psychic type. But maybe they don't deserve all that flack, because three of you in chat also said Gengar. When you're filling out this survey, you can just go, Bulbapedia, list of Psychic type Pokemon. Is Gengar on that list? I don't think so. Did you check? No, obviously not. And one last strange Psychic type to make it on the list was Psyduck. Now, I kind of get this one. It has Psy in the name, it has headaches, it can use moves like Confusion, Psychic, and Zen Headbutt, but no, it's not a Psychic type, and neither is its Evolution Golduck. They're just wannabe Psychic Headache Ducks. All right, that's all the behind the scenes TRG Coliseum Family Feud insider information that I've got for you today. I hope you're really looking forward to the game itself. We've hopefully got some great answers to our survey questions from you guys in chat. And I'm looking forward to see how our contestants do at reading the mind of Twitch chat and understanding how you guys think. If anything, the thing that Family Feud shows us the most is that Twitch chat is pretty weird. I'll see you all in the show. Hey, my name is Michael Robinson. I am the Crisis Mapping and Data Science Specialist at Direct Relief. I do lots of mapping. Um, I work with a lot of different data sets, both internal data sets, uh, so shipping data that we have, grants related data, what went where, what was in a delivery, that sort of thing. I also uh, pull together a lot of external data sets, either to combine with the internal data for you know, all kinds of different analyses, making maps, uh, looking at relationships between different data sets, and sometimes just uh, grab uh, additional data sets or pull in additional data sets uh, because the analysis really focuses on what's going on with that particular data independent of any direct relief related data. I guess I don't find what I do super interesting when I talk about it. I'm like, I work with a lot of spreadsheets. <laughs> I make some maps. Um, 
I, you know, one of the main things I do is just ongoing COVID response. So direct relief uh, has been a, you know, very, very active in COVID response. And so almost every day uh, I update a map with COVID counts around the U.S. and uh, COVID related distributions, uh, emergency distributions around the US. And then about once a week or so, I update a, a separate product that is uh, really global focused. And so lots of different, you know, uh, lots of different countries around the world and, and direct release response to those countries. Well, I've been here two years now, and I was actually an intern, a student intern here when I was in college uh, in, the mid 90s i was an intern at direct relief and direct relief was the kind of organization that that i always thought you know hey someday if i could like work at a nonprofit that does amazing things i'd love to work at a place like like direct relief i didn't think i'd ever be able to get a job at direct relief and so now having worked here for two years i think what the organization does just astounds me the the response not only disaster response you know earthquake happens hurricane happens and direct relief is there helping people out. But uh, a lot of the, the kind of ongoing response, uh, kids suffering from cancer, uh, a lot of maternal and child health work that we do, um, response to the opioid crisis, again, just sort of ongoing response and ongoing aid that direct relief provides blows me away. I'd love how um, at least all the folks that I interact with around the organization, they there's there's really a love for what the organization does and what we're involved in. And so I, I really like being a part of that. I swim just about every day. I swam in high school, uh, swam and played water polo in high school. And then I thought I wanted to continue swimming in college and that didn't work out. I was too busy with school, uh, but I've kind of been swimming masters ever since. It's like swim team for adults when you don't have to stress too much about <laughs> the coached workout and so i swim almost every day uh, i surf i play a lot of music play guitar play bass guitar play some drums now and again hang out with my family wrestle with my dog i, I play a lot of world of warcraft with my daughter actually I, i've been playing world of warcraft since it came out vanilla before it was vanilla um it took a big break around panda and kind of got back back into it a little bit more recently. Uh, I particularly like uh, Burning Crusade. <laughs> but my daughter and I play that a lot. It's really fun. I also like playing snowboard games on Xbox. I think that's a lot of fun. Uh, I wish I could snowboard that well. I can't snowboard that well. Play Pokemon Go now and again with my daughter as well. It's fun stuff. It's really fun to play together. When I think of crazy stuff that I'd be willing to do for donations to direct relief, I think of like doing something that causes physical discomfort, like, uh, you know, our ocean is rather cold. And so immersing myself in really cold water for a certain amount of time. Yeah, I, I don't really mind embarrassing myself. Uh, I was a, a professor for about 15 years and I was used to being very self-deprecating and making fun of myself and telling very embarrassing stories. So like, I kind of don't mind embarrassing myself. Hey, on behalf of myself and uh, the folks here at Direct Relief, I just want to send out a huge thank you to the Runaway Guys Coliseum crew and audience for their super generous support. Uh, it, it helps around the world. It makes a big difference. We get to send out medicine and product to folks uh, that, that really, really need it. So thank you for your support. My name is Steve Lang. I am the Senior Manager of Web at Direct Relief. I've been here for almost nine years now, and uh, about six years ago, I had the distinct pleasure of helping launch the Direct Relief Gaming Program. I am very closely involved with the sort of care and maintenance of our website, directrelief.org. So that incorporates everything from working with our developers to come up with enhancements or fixes to the website, to meeting with our communications or partnerships in philanthropy or other teams to identify areas of the website that need to be improved or expanded upon to better serve the needs of our organization and those seeking information about the work. 
It's really hard to pick a single program that Director Leaf works on that I'm enthusiastic about, like as a, as an individual one, because um, I'm enthusiastic about all of them. Um, and I mean, I, I suppose anyone could see that answer coming, but um, I can say this. Uh, you know, Direct Relief is known for its disaster response efforts, and certainly my own awareness of Direct Relief stems back to disaster response efforts that I became aware of when I was working at a previous job, when actually we had done um, sort of a, a co-branded um, effort with Direct Relief, where we had provided some some supplies to Direct Relief staff who had gone in 2011 to respond to one of the horrible earthquakes in Haiti. And in any event, I learned more about Direct Relief at that time, and I really became a fan. I, I donated. I became a donor at that time as well, even though you know my company was was supporting them, not my own company, but the company I worked for was was supporting Direct Relief. Um, and I started following them, and it was it was because of that disaster response effort in Haiti that I started paying closer attention to what Direct Relief does. And um, a few years after that, when a position became available here, I you know applied for it and fortunately I was accepted and and I've been with the organization ever since. So disaster response, I think is something that really hits home for a lot of people. Uh, it's really gratifying to speak to people or hear the stories of people who have been affected by an emergency or a natural disaster and who were able to get support uh, through one of our clinic partners and and just have a what's probably one of the worst experiences of their lives made slightly less bad. Uh, through that support from their clinic partner. And it's nice to know that Direct Relief was able to, to help make that happen. But beyond that, um, I'm really passionate about our health equity program, where we are trying to expand access to health care for underprivileged and underserved folks throughout the United States, in addition, of course, to our work in over 100 countries worldwide. So um, across the board, I, it's hard to pick a favorite program here, uh, but the disaster response and health equity programs, which you can read about on the website, um, are, are ones that I'm, I'm really proud to be part of Direct Relief uh, and, and involved in. A few years back, a friend of mine challenged me to learn to, or to try Dark Souls, and I started with Dark Souls 3. And it was his birthday, and I think I was mostly there just to provide sort of an entertainment for he and his friends to laugh at me as I struggled and failed repeatedly with uh, the first boss of Dark Souls 3, Udix Gunder. And um, the weird thing was, I didn't defeat the boss, I just got destroyed over and over again for like an hour. But I didn't give up, and I went home that night, and I bought Dark Souls 3 on Steam, and I ended up going on and beating it uh, on mouse and keyboard, of all things, because I had not really been using controllers that much for, for quite some time. Uh, and that kind of opened up gaming for me. Um, I don't think of Dark Souls as being any particular barometer of difficulty. I do think it's a great meme about game difficulty, but... That experience led me to finding, uh, at the invitation of a friend, the Monster Hunter franchise. And this has become my true home in video gaming. This is what I truly am passionate about when it comes to, to sort of a game experience. And uh, so yeah, Monster Hunter is, is definitely the top of my list in terms of gaming. In addition to entertainment type games like Monster Hunter, I've been a lifelong aviation enthusiast. And my earliest loves in gaming were actually around simulation and specifically flight simulators. Uh, and about 10 years ago, I built a, my first flight sim setup where I've got like a joystick and throttle, rudder, pe rudder pedals, track IR setup. And uh, that's a real passion of mine. Um, so between Monster Hunter, which is like my normie gaming experience, and my flight sims, which are my hardcore, like very nerdy uh, uh, experience, th those are sort of the bookends of digital gaming for me in, in 2022. Outside of gaming, um, you know, I'm, I'm married. I have two boys. Uh, they are teenagers now. One is getting ready to go off to college. Um, I do game with them, but we also go surfing, skateboarding. We actually built a, a little mini ramp in our backyard a few years ago so the boys could ride that. Um, and uh, a lot of other outdoor activities. I've taken them camping a lot. We do a lot of cycling together on bicycles as a family. Um, and in addition to that, like I mentioned, I have a real passion for aviation. So I've been around flying and airplanes my whole life. My grandfather was a pilot 
in World War II. My father was a private pilot. Uh, I have some flight experience as well. And um, one other way that my aviation passion exhibits itself is I've been uh, really into model aircraft since I was very young. And I'm not talking about static models, although I like those too, but I'm talking about radio controlled aircraft. And um, about 15 years ago, I designed a radio controlled glider called LeFish, which is dedicated to uh, aerobatic flying. And now aerobatics are doing tricks in the sky with an airplane. And so I designed this glider and I released its plan for free to the internet. Um, there's a whole story about that that it's kind of cool. It involves my son, but I won't go into it right now. But anyways, it was very gratifying to see that the plan for the fish became very popular. And in the years since, it has been downloaded, built and flown, and even had commercial kits sold uh, on all of the continents around the world. And I've been privileged to get to speak to lots of people who've built and flown my plane and really had a great time with it. And I've also been fortunate to travel to a few different places around the world to fly with people who who know the plane and we get to share some really great times together. So anyways, lots of outdoor activities when I'm not inside getting sweaty playing Monster Hunter. Well, to the Runaway Guys Coliseum, the crew and the community, I want to just thank you on behalf of Direct Relief for all that you've done to support the work. It's only because of folks like you that Direct Relief can accomplish its mission. We are entirely privately funded. We spend almost no money on fundraising. And it's only because folks like you learn about us, check us out, and get involved that we are able to do the things that we do. And it's really not us that are doing it. It's you that are making it possible. Therefore, it's you that are doing it. So thank you for that. Please enjoy the event and hope you have a great time. I'll be watching. I'll try to get into chat and uh, have a great time. And on behalf of Director Leaf, again, thank you. Have you ever struggled with trying to describe to your family about the things you love on the internet and they just don't get it? It's like trying to teach your grandpa what a meme is, or teaching your mom what PogChamp is. The world is changing quickly, and it can be really hard to keep up. And as somebody who was a part of the Runaway Guys Coliseum this weekend, I can definitely attest to the struggle that I have gone through trying to tell my family about this event. They like it because it raises money for charity, but it's just something they don't understand. And it made me realize that the Runaway Guys and this event in general is one of those events where if you know, you know, and if you don't, it's kind of hard to understand. So to try to combat this confusion, I decided to try to make a PowerPoint presentation to describe what the Runaway Guys is. So hopefully even people like my family can understand what this event is about. So let's check it out. Okay, so let's start off with an easy question. Who are the Runaway Guys? The Runaway Guys consist of three guys. Proton John, Sugar Conroy, and Antino Capri Sun who have all been less players for over a decade now and been doing so consistently. So the three of these guys started a collaborative Let's Play channel back in 2011, bringing their audiences together to watch them play multiplayer Nintendo games and various platforming games in front of a large audience. And on this channel, they've amassed almost 400 million views, which is freaking insane. Props to these men. And they have also created 40 full collaborative Let's Plays on this channel from front to back, fully finished, all great quality, something that hasn't been done very frequently by many people on the internet. And it's just a cool thing. So in 2011, the trio started traveling to conventions such as PAX and MAGFest, and they would host these invitational Let's Play tournaments where they would invite Let's Players and different content creators to be a part of this tournament that they would record and put on the Runaway Guys channel, which started building up an even larger community for Let's Players in general, getting them to all come together, and it was a really wholesome time and really started building some awesome community. And then in 2012, they started hosting their own panel at different conventions called Throne Controllers, where they would call up different audience members to come up and test out their video game knowledge and skills and a chance to win prizes. And all of this was awesome. It just forged a great community of gamers and has been something that's been very amazing to witness. And it's just been nothing but happiness and wholesomeness and amazing community growth ever since they started doing this back in 2012. And they still haven't stopped. They're still going hard regardless of what's happening in the world. They still got the spunk. And then this event, the Runaway Guys Coliseum, started in 2018, where the Runaway Guys and MC 
worked together to plan a three-day gaming charity live stream. And then what they did is they invited a lot of Let's Players who had fun and uplifting personalities that they trusted and that they knew would get along together because they had met us at conventions and throwing events there and just seeing how we all get along. And they put together a crew, invited us all out, and we hosted the Runaway Guys Coliseum at an Airbnb, just playing tons of fun games and raising money for charity and seeing what the event could evolve into. And now at this point, we have several events under our belt and we have pretty much figured out what this event totally is. So this event pretty much has three main sections. The main section is multiplayer gaming events with crazy twists and challenges to raise money for charity, which I'll give some examples in a moment. Then we have some wonderful musical guests who do musical performance, typically a video game song covers and remixes live for the audience. And in between these events, we have funny skits and bumpers that are played in between the excitement to build up lore and memes for the event and community as a whole. Some examples of some of these gaming events would be Mario 64 Bingo, where we had two teams compete to fill out a bingo card by completing various challenges in Mario 64 that were in the bingo spaces. And then there was ways for audiences to interact with the players in real time by donating money to charity to mess with the players by either making them game with oven mitts on or spraying them in the face of the water bottle or having their controller flipped upside down and lots of other more creative stuff that we've been doing. And another example of an event was the Mario Controller Switcher, where we had four players trying to play Mario World together, but every second, the controller input would cycle to the next controller. So each player would play for one second before it passes on to the next person. So everyone had to try to be in sync and try to do the same thing. So you were doing the right moves whenever it came to be your turn. It was chaos. And we have tons of different events like this that involve tons of great personalities and it all just comes together and makes a really, really good show. And now that we know what the show is, I guess I should go ahead and explain who is involved. So we have the original trilogy of men, Proton John and Tanuka Priestan and Shaker Conroy, who have all three been pioneers of Let's Playing and have been successfully Let's Playing longer than anybody else in the world and still going while doing amazing things on the side. They inspired a whole generation of Les players and gamers through their high quality content with a lot of information and personality plugged into the videos just to make them a very fulfilling experience. And as somebody who grew up watching them, I can definitely say that they have been life changing and inspiring to me along with many, many others. Now the next two members in the group are Steven George and Mal Mix, who are my grandparents. They're an amazing couple who have been less playing for over 10 years as well. Steven George is a madman. He's created over 13,000 videos in the past 12 years, and he's been making content pretty much daily since then. He's a workhorse, but he is very respectable. Him and his wife, Mal, have been cultivating a very wholesome community and corner of the internet where anybody can feel like home. Then we have Tom Fox, who is a fearlessly charismatic Let's Player who's always working hard and helping others. He has great impressions. He has so much energy. He's always coming through with some jokes. He's always there for you. Tom Fox, he's a great guy. And then there's Miss Sayanella, who's a really cute and wholesome Let's Player and streamer who puts so much effort into her videos. She's also a phenomenal artist and she's a really competitive gamer as well. And both Tom and Miss Say have both been very close friends of TRG for a while now and have featured as a fourth player for many of their projects. And then next we have my buddy, Josh Jepson, and myself attacking Toucans. Now Josh is a freaking hilarious streamer with so much personality. He can make you laugh so easy and he's really good at executing ideas. He's like always there for people and is always making cool stuff happen on the internet. Very innovative guy. And he's also somebody that I used to work with a lot, a lot, because we used to share a channel back in the past called Versus, where we used to race against each other in video games all the time. And it was really good fun as well. Now, myself, um, I'm a Let's Player who's mostly focused on comedy, editing, and playing games pretty thoroughly. <laughs> I take games way too seriously, but in the best possible way, I'd say. And I also do a lot of randomizer content, which has been a really fun new wave to run on. Both of us have been making gaming and Let's Play content on the internet for over 10 years as well, and it's been phenomenal to get to work along all these amazing people. Next, we have some of the musicians. We have Family Jewels, 
who is a metal guitarist who makes video game rock music along with other rock remixes and covers. And he's also a freaking hilarious streamer, if you did not know. But this man is insane. He's made so many musical collaborations on YouTube and has just done stuff that most people have never even dreamed of accomplishing. Really astounding dude, great personality. And then there's his friend Jack, who he actually goes on tour with, with his video game rock covers. And Jack pretty much does a similar thing, where he specializes in creating video game metal and rock covers. But yeah, these dudes, they are not afraid to open the pit! Moving on, we have the wonderful Adriana Figueroa, who's an online personality who focuses mostly on doing vocal covers of animated video games and television shows voice of an angel and she's also freaking hilarious like if you've ever played or seen her play among us she has no chills <laughs> she's so devious it's great and then we have sab irene who's a very very talented musician that can rock a variety of instruments which much much respect there and on top of that she's also a vocalist and she's been making some really high quality video game music arrangements on youtube for a while now definitely a beautiful soul the next, we have the energetic 8-bit drummer, who is a passionate drummer who plays covers of all sorts of music on Twitch. Lots of meme songs, lots of video game songs, real songs, just, just whatever. He does awesome drum covers and brings all of the energy. It's insane. Makes me feel like I need to drink three monsters in order to like keep up with it. Then our last musician is none other than Insane in the Rain Music who is a very talented jazz musician who plays many instruments and creates beautiful video game music arrangements online, along with doing tons of performances at conventions and various festivals. Definitely somebody you want to see live. And then we can't forget some of the tech crew who brings a lot of wonderful personality to the event. We have none other than Super MC Gamer, who is the curator of this whole entire event. He runs all of the tech, does all the organization, a lot of the scheduling, and it's insane. I don't even know how he does what he does. Super crazy guy, and he's also producing Zeldathon, which is another charity event. So this guy is just producing crazy events that raise lots of money for charity. Like, what more can you ask for? <laughs> then we have Jiggy, who is a really clever and creative guy who's always coming up with tons of cool content ideas for Twitch and YouTube, and he also was great at executing them. And he's always been doing these things at various conventions, and it's just cool to see what he's working on. And then we have Motion Dan, who is the main editor for the Runaway Guys, but is also close with many of the members. Very funny guy, talented editor, always putting in work, big props to him. And then there's some other members who either aren't going to be a part of it this year or couldn't be in the intro. We have Luka Jin, who is one of my favorite humans on this planet. She is the funniest internet aunt you'll ever have, who plays lots of funny and random retro games on YouTube and Twitch, along with like visual novels and like Danganronpa, tons of cool stuff. We have Maryland, who is a Pokemon fanatic, who has run a channel and website dedicated to Pokemon guides and walkthroughs for a long time now and has amassed a really large following for it. We have the Donna Bells, who's a shiny and enthusiastic gamer who can put a smile on anybody's face with her witty and hilarious banter. My life would not be the same without that woman. And then, last but not least, we have The Completionist, who has 100% completed over 400 games and has made an entertaining video essay over each one. How does he do it? Literally no one knows. It's, it's mind-blowing. And then, of course, there's the audience. This event would literally not exist without the people who watch and all of the mods and other people who make it all happen behind the scenes. It's a really cool event that takes a lot of collaborative effort and loving and passionate community, but it is one of the most wholesome and beautiful things I think that exists on the world right now, and I can't even believe I'm a part of it, and hopefully me making this video can help some people understand what this event is a bit better. But we have this beautiful family who is all very talented. I actually did some math, and amongst this group, the combined number of views of everybody on our channels is over 4.5 billion. So the amount of social impact that this group has had on the online gaming community has been pretty astounding. I honestly can't wait to see what else we can accomplish in the future. That's what I got. If you didn't know what TRG Coliseum was or who was involved, hopefully you have a better idea after watching this presentation. Thank you so much. Anyways, with that, I'm gonna head out.